Hello, my name is Eduardo. I'm a member of the VGS core team, and I'm also the author of The Router and Pina. And today I want to show you patterns that I really like, that I think are elegant when using Pina, and they will help you write more maintainable stores or refactor features, or even make things you might think were not possible to do before. In this first lesson, we're going to see how to use the router or any other global C within a store and vice versa. We have to consider both scenarios, a single page application and a server-side render application, which have different restrictions in terms of where and how we can use the globals, like the store and the router, for very important reasons, mainly security. As you can see here, in a regular component, any component in a view project, you can just call use router or use whatever store you created within the script setup or the setup function, and it would just work. But you cannot really do that anywhere. For example, when you are inside a view component, you can call use router, use whatever store you created, and everything will just work. And this is the same for any other composable. But if you try to use the same function in another file, for example, here I'm going to move to the main.ts, where I create the router, by the way, and after creating the application, I'm going to try to call that same function. So here I call use router, and I'm going to show you on the browser that I will see an error. Let's see here. View warm in J can only be used in site setup or functional components. Now, this error actually comes from the router, not from view. But what happens is that when we create globals for our application, the way we make these global accessible to every component is through an API called Provide Inject. Provide Inject is a view API that you can check on view documentation that allows you to provide uh, any global to every component in an application. This is what we use in libraries like Pinia and Router to provide the Pinia instance and the Router instance, and also the global route. As the error mentions, inject and provide can only be used in size setup or functional components. So we cannot just call use router or use store anywhere. This is why we have to make things a little bit different. Before showing how to correctly use this, there is something to keep in mind, is that if you are using SSR, for example, you have a Nuxt application, you might need to do things a little bit more complicated Whereas if you have just a single page application with no server-side rendering, well, uh, look at you, things are way simpler. Let's first see how we can handle things with just a single page application. Let's start by removing what I was writing before, which is completely wrong. So let's remove the use router I had here and remove the import. You can see here we create a router uh, instance as well as a Pinia instance. We can, uh, of course, export these whereas it's in the main file or in another auxiliary file, that doesn't matter. But when we export them, we are sure that we only have one router per application and we always have only one router in our JavaScript context. So we can just import that anywhere we want. For example, here I have some authentication store and I can just import the router naturally and it will work. So here I add the import, I think it's main and this router will just work now keep in mind here i'm using main as an example but you should probably move that to a different file like router.ts router.js or pinia.ts pinia.js for pinia instead of putting that in the main file as i did right now so once you have the router imported you can just use it the same way you would use it inside a component say router.push router.replace anything you want there is really nothing more you need to do. Things will just work because you are in a single page application. Now let's talk about a service that render application, which is a little bit more complicated. I'm going to remove uh, these things. I add it. And I'm actually going to create the extra file just to show how to do that. Now let's do the same thing with the Pinia instance. 
All right, we're all set up. As you can see, we went from having everything in the main TS file into having multiple files, one for the router and one for Pinia. And this is going to be essential in order to uh, use them both together. Let's say we want to redirect the user when they log out into the home page, a login page, or something else. So we want to use the router within our authentication store, uh, within some of the actions to redirect the user to, let's say, the login page once they log out. So here, I would like to be able to call router.push and then login. So here the question is, how do I use the router taking into account that I'm on a server-side render application and I cannot just import the router and use it? In order to solve that, we are going to add a plugin, our Pinia plugin. So we're going to go to the pinia.ts here and we're going to say pinia.use. This is how we add plugins to the Pinia. And we're going to write an inline plugin right here. But in practice, know that you can also put that into a different file if you prefer, or if the plugin is a bit too long. A Pinia plugin is a function that takes one argument. That argument contains everything you need to customize your stores. We call that context, which doesn't have too much meaning. So usually what you want to do is destructure that object. Here, if we use other completion, we can see all the different options that we can reach. We have the store, the Pinia instance, the options that were passed to the store, and also the application that this Pinia is attached to. It's important to note that you should add plugins to your Pinia instance before creating any stores and also before passing the Pinia instance to your application. Here, what we need to do is actually very simple and very short. We need to get access to the store. So here we're going to type the store and we want to add a new property. So we can just say store dot whatever property we want equals whatever we want. In this case, we want to add a router instance. So we're going to say router equals router. And of course, I need to import this variable. Now, keep in mind that this scenario is simplified. It's a single page application scenario that I'm trying to adapt to a server-side application. In a real server-side rendering case, you have the creation of the router next to the Pinia creation as well. So these variables are together at that point, and that's where you need to connect them. By injecting the router into the store manually by setting a variable, we are recreating the provide inject in a way that we have reviewed naturally within components, except that here we don't have any component tree happening for stores. So after adding the router to the store with just these three lines of code, if we go back to our authentication store, we can now access the route with this dot router. Now, as you can see here, TypeScript is still complaining, saying that route doesn't exist. But you will see that if we execute this code, we will actually make the router push a new location. So let's try that out. Here, I'm going to log in, and I'm going to log out, which should redirect us to a page that doesn't exist in this application. And as you can see, the router is telling me I don't have that page where I'll log in. And if I look at the URL, I can see that I did navigate to the login page. Now, let's check again by commenting the plugin that we just added. I'm going to reload the page to make sure that we recreate the, the whole context. And I can try again. And we can see here that we get a different error where the router is not defined. All right, so let's go back here, re-enable our router injection. And now there is one thing left to do is to type this. How do we make it uh, in order for router to be recognized as a property of each store? What we're going to do is to augment Pinia types. We do this by using the declare module statement of TypeScript, say Pinia, and inside we're going to extend an interface with our own custom properties. So this interface is named Pinia Custom Properties, and we can add anything we want. And as you can see, Copilot is already scrolling my style a little bit, but we're going to add the router. And the type of this is not going to be type of router, uh, although this is actually valid. So instead, what we're going to do here is give the actual type of the router, which is just router here. Let's just correct the import right here. This is not the right one, it's just your router. And now if we go back to our authentication store, we can see that we no longer have the red line underneath. 
And if we highlight the router property here, we actually have correct type. So we have typed our router in a stores and we have given access to every store to the router instance. There is one last recommendation I want to give you is that when you create new custom properties and you add them uh, into your stores via a plugin like we just did with the router, you want to uh, use the macro function from view. So macro is a function that you should use on complex object. Anything that is not just state, but is a class instance, have functions that doesn't need to be observed or to be reactive, just mark it row so view doesn't traverse that object and tries to make it reactive. It will make your application a little bit more performant in the worst scenario. And in the best scenario, it would just avoid errors and make the application more performant in general. Now let's do the opposite. Let's try to use the store within a navigation card. I'm going to go into the router file and I'm going to create an imaginary navigation card that we would use for authentication purposes. So we could say here before each, and we can say two, we don't need to write the from and the next if we don't use them, especially the next one, the next argument, which is not longer necessary in the view router before. And here we're going to imagine that we have a meta property on routes that allows us to define if the user should be authenticated in order to access the route. I'm gonna say that this property is called requires auth. So requires auth, um, and if it requires auth, we need to check if the user is logged in. So here, what I probably want to do is do const user store, and here we're gonna call the store that we just created before. So this is going to be auth store. Auth completion is not working, so I'm gonna manually added myself here. Let's add the import as well. All right, I was just uh, making a typo on the name of the store, is user store. So here, the user store dot user can be null. If we don't have a user, we probably want to redirect them to uh, a login page. So here, push login. All right. So here the question is, how do we ensure that the store we are using is the correct one? And by correct, I mean the one used by our application. And this is very important. Why? When you're doing server-side rendering, you might have multiple requests at the same time. Now, these requests will create a user-specific uh, state, like their sensitive information, their name, or even some information, some data that is only available to a logged in user. If you don't ensure that we are using the correct Pinya instance, so the Pinya instance that is associated with the current app, the current router, we might uh, end up using by accident. And uh, this is not a deterministic thing because it depends on how the node process might pose, pause in between a request. You may end up just serving the wrong user information <laughs> to the wrong user. In the best case, it's just confusing for the user, but in the worst case, you're exposing your application to a big security risk. In order to use a correct store, you need to tell the use user store which Pinya instance it should be using. Pinya behind the scenes is creating its own inject provide version that you can use. So here, you can just pass the Pinya instance and we can import it. Again, as I said before, Within the Pinya plugin, usually in a server-side render application, the creation of the Pinya and the creation of the router are put in the same place or have access uh, in a way that you know you're in the context of one application here and just importing it, which wouldn't really work in a server-side render context. But the resulting code at the end is the same. So after passing the Pinya instance as the first argument to our use your store, that's it. We are ensuring that the user store that we get here is the correct one. Now I could show you the difference, but there is no difference here. And I wouldn't be able, even if I wanted to, uh, reproduce uh, this authentication and security risk as it requires you to have concurrent requests at the same time. And it's pretty much a timing issue as well. One last important detail to note is that you make sure that you use first Pinia and then the router when you are creating your application. If you don't have access to 
these options, they are probably already handled correctly. But the idea is that using the router will trigger the first the initial navigation. That's why you want to call use router after USB. We saw how to use the router within an option store here by accessing via this. But you might be thinking, what about the setup stores? Setup stores are stores that instead of being defined through an object of options are defined through a function, much like setup components. In this case, we don't have this. We don't have the context, the GS context. So the most natural way to use the router here would be to just call the function use router. What I'm going to show you doesn't work yet, but it's going to work soon. We're waiting for one feature to be merged and released on view core, and it would allow the setup stores to use inject within them, which will make use router and use route work. So we're going to show the rest uh, as if this feature was available, but just keep in mind that you might have to wait for view 3.3 to be released in order to use this feature. So let's add the import here. And that's all we need to do. We can just use the router as if we were in a setup component. So we go here into logout and we say router.push uh, slash login. And we are done. All right, we cover how to use uh, globals such as the router within stores, how to type them as well, and how to use the stores within the router. I hope you find these tips useful and that you can make great use of them in your next project.